welcome to this episode of the Oakley Sports Report. As always, I'm your host, Sean Doherty, and all year long, it's been my pleasure to bring to you the Bear Cub faithful, almost everything you've needed to know about Bear Cub athletics. It's been a great year of Bear Cub sports with six Big A champions and two state champions, but the semester is coming to an end, and as it does, so does the world of sports. Last, on last week's show, we had on your Bear Cub golf coach, Dave Harrington, and team captain, Chris Gregus. The golf team was preparing to head down to the state championship to play against Chabot, College of the Desert, and College of the Canyon. Our Bear Cubs played great and came home with a third place finish in the state championship. The Bear Cubs were edged out by just seven strokes by both College of the Desert and College of the Canyon, who tied shooting at 719 overall. College of the Desert won the state champions with College of the Canyon coming in second place, our Bear Cubs in third, and Chabot finishing fourth. One other note from the state championship, Bear Cub team captain Chris Gregus was named to the All-State team. The Oakley Sports Report would like to say congratulations to our Bear Cub golf team on a phenomenal season. This week we have a special guest for you, your Bear Cub direct, athletic director, Dr. Jim Forkham. Jim, thank you so much for, for joining us on the show. Uh, I've been really anticipating spending some time with you and, and uh, being able to ask you some, some great questions uh, as it comes to, to Bear Cub Athletics and uh, you know, also get to know you a little, uh, a little bit yourself. Uh, how, uh, first thing I wanted to ask you is how long have you been serving as athletic director here at the junior college? Well, believe it or not, Sean, I'm into my sixth year. Okay. Time, time really flies. I came on board in uh, March of 2007. So we're just now getting to that six year mark and uh, have enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, before we go any farther, I, I would like to throw in my congratulations to Dave Harrington and the men's golf team too for a great, great effort at the state championships. They have given us great stuff all season long for the show. They, they've had some incredible winning streaks and, and really has been a lot of fun to, uh, to, to follow them this season. Uh, one thing that is, uh, you know, kind of a, a candy coated question for you is uh, what has been your most memorable year in the six years that you've been here at the junior college? Well, I would think it, it would be the last couple of years in which we've won a number of state championships. In fact, we've won 50, actually 16 now, 16 state championships altogether. But 10 of those have come uh, since 2000, and five of those have come in just the last three years. So that's really exciting. Our first uh, championship in uh, swimming, women's swimming, three years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, and then women's basketball last year. Mm -hmm. And then this year, I mean, how do you top two state championships in one year? Well, women's I, soccer and then, uh, of course, uh, our uh, men's swim team. And the men's swim and dive team, they ran the gamut. They start, they open up the season uh, in, in for basically in first place and ran all the way to the state championship. No one really got in their way. And uh, that, that's got to be such a, such a great feeling for you as being the athletic director. Um, when, when, it comes to, uh, uh, when it comes to the various sports, how, how excited do you get when, when one of our teams grabs a Big A championship or grabs a, a state championship? Well, I'm, I'm excited any time one of our teams takes the court or takes the field or, or enters competition. <clears throat> In fact, I kind of have a a standing uh, director to our uh, uh, coaches that they text me after the game, let me know how they're doing, you know, when they're competing away mm -hmm. from home. Yeah. Uh, and I try to be at uh, every single home event that I can be, and I make the large majority of them. Uh, I'm a big fan. You know, I mean, that, there's, there's just no doubt about it. This is what I do. It's what I am. It's what I'm here for is to help support our coaches and, and help support our student athletes. So. Competition is what we measure ourselves by. Mm -hmm. It's how we know that we're heading in the right direction. Uh, you know, we're certainly not going to win every time we take the court, but uh, that's what our, our goal is to, to be very, very successful and provide the very best environment that we can. So I, I'm on the internet, I'm on the radio, I'm getting text messages. Uh, at some of our basketball games, I'll literally get text messages about every two minutes mm -hmm. of what the score is and how we're doing. And, and I'm nervous if, if I don't know how we're doing or I haven't heard in a while, I think bad things and think maybe we're not doing too well. 
Um, so I'm nervous just like our coaches and, and just like our athletes. You, you sound like a traditional sports fan. You know, it, it, it sounds like you, you kind of live or die with, uh, with every minute of the game. And, and that's really, uh, that's, that's a, a, an awesome thing. You know, uh, it's not just a job for you, but it's also, you know, something that you're very much a fan of and, and something that you very, very much love. Um, what, what's your favorite sport? To follow. Well, basketball was my uh, love. <laughs> I played uh, baseball, a little bit of football in high school, ran some cross country, but basketball was my passion. I played through high school and college and mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, semi-pro wow. type basketball, and then I coached basketball for 33 years. So that's, that's my sport, but I love baseball. I love college football. I actually love the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't like attending games, but I like watching <laughs> games. I love the Niners, uh, the Giants. I've been a Giants fan for most of my life. Uh, and I, really, I watch lacrosse. I watch rugby. Uh, anything that comes on TV that has to do with sports, 95% of the time, I'm going to stop the channel right there and watch. How, so how, how many hours of the day is your TV tuned to ESPN? <laughs> well, it's not on ESPN so much anymore, but you know it's on the Giants channel. Mm -hmm. I watched the game yeah. last night. Uh, you know, I watch every Niners game that's on when when it's available, uh, and I watch Sports Center from time to time to try to catch up on what's been going on and, mm -hmm. and to stay up with it. But if I had the time, uh, I'd watch anything and everything I could on sports. Excellent, excellent. Uh, this year has been a big big year of change here at the at the junior college. Uh, we got a new school president, Dr. Frank Chong. Um, what, what's, it been, uh, what's it been like working with him and his vision for athletics here at the JC? Well, first of all, I, I would begin to answer that question by saying we had great support from Dr. Robert Agrella, as you know, that mm -hmm. just retired. Yes. I'm gonna miss him, I miss him already. Uh, he was a fantastic supporter of our program. He understood why we're here uh, what our role is and how we fit in the educational mission of the college and not everyone does so that was huge for the president of the college to to really have a good understanding yeah. of of why what we do is so important uh, dr chong uh, just coming in is, ha, gives that same kind of support he's a little bit different from dr agrella in that he has a propensity for showing up to games mm -hmm. uh, he was at a baseball game last week dressed in a athletic shirt <laughs> shorts and flip-flops came out stayed uh, 15 20 minutes enjoyed a couple of innings he's been to a lot of our different uh, events uh, you never know when he's going to show up he just kind of pops in uh, and so he also has that same understanding of our role in the overall educational mission of mm -hmm. the college and why what we do is important uh, I couldn't ask for two better presidents to serve under in my role as director of athletics. And I think he's going to become, you know, as much a Bear Cub supporter in every way uh, that Dr. Agrella was. And, and probably in terms of visibility and being at events, uh, I think we'll even see him more often than we did uh, Dr. Agrella. Okay. This year also, you know, six Big 8 championships, two state, you know, and as we had talked about, uh, two state championships. Um, what has been the the biggest accomplishment? I mean, I, it's easy to say the soccer team or the, or the men's swim and dive team winning the state, but what team do you think has either come the most, come the farthest this season, or has been the biggest surprise of the of the of the school year? Well, first of all, I look at all of our programs from kind of a, a little bit different perspective. You know, I'm proud of all of our teams. We have 20 sports. We have outstanding coaches. We have outstanding students that participate. Our athletic training staff is, is top notch. And so I really do look at all of them. Uh, but to answer your question directly, to single out one this year, I would say would, our, would be our men's basketball team. Mm -hmm. Our men's basketball team has not had uh, a lot of championships in the last eight, nine, ten years. Yeah. Uh, this year, both our men's and women's teams both won respective Big 8 Conference yeah. championships. And to go 13-1 and one in the Big 8 Conference that our men did this year was just a huge, huge accomplishment. The Big 8, as you well know, is one of the most competitive, if not the co most competitive conference in the state. And to uh, win a championship in the Big 8, you've accomplished something. 
So again, for basketball, men in particular, to get to the third round of the NorCal championships, yeah. have a 13 and one record in the Big Eight Conference, and be three points away from going to the state tournament. Yeah. Uh, to me, if I had to name one, that would be the special yeah. one for me. And I know it was uh, uh, losing the uh, losing that final game that they were in was was a heartbreaker for them. And but they really did. I, I got to kind of agree with you there because they really kind of came. You know, you knew early on in the season that they were they were looking really good and and were headed in the right direction. I, I don't know if anybody thought that they were going to excel as much as they did um, throughout the throughout the basketball season and they they did a, a, a great job um, in that in that tournament that they played in the the big A tournament um, and so yeah I, I would kind of kind of agree with you uh, as we come to the end of this school year the the 2011-2012 year what's been your most memorable moment well, I think what will be my most memorable moment actually will take place tomorrow night. And that's our annual spring athletic awards and academic awards dinner in which we'll have all of our winter and spring sports. So that'll be 11 teams mm -hmm. that'll be there and we'll recognize their great accomplishments on the field, uh, but also what they've done academically. I'm every bit as proud of our teams for the academic accomplishments that they've achieved as I am the athletic. And so for me, that's the culmination of a lot of hard work on their part, coaches and players, uh, and all of our fans and supporters. And uh, to, again, to recognize the total student athlete. So that's coming up tomorrow night at 5.30 in Towser Gym. And for me, that's gonna be the highlight. It always is. I, I feel so good about watching our young kids get up and be recognized mm -hmm. and uh, how nice they look and they're dressed and, yeah. you know, and they speak well. Uh, and it's a chance for us to really recognize, you know, what a great year they have had. And it's such an accomplishment, managing both a, a full-time school schedule as well with athletics. And I'm sure some of these kids have jobs and, you know, outside activities. It, it really shows what, kind, what these young people are made of and, and how strong of individuals that they are and how they're really set up for, for, for success throughout life. Um, Speaking of success, how do you rate the success of this year's sports teams? You know, we, we were ranked very high in the overall uh, uh, um, for junior colleges. <coughs> right. uh, last time I checked, we were at number four in the, the nation, I believe. Um, how, how do you rate the, the, the year of success that, that our teams have had? Well, as you know, last year we were number two, mm -hmm. and we just barely missed winning the national championship by three and a half points. Uh, this year we're in fourth. I'm hopeful that with the strong finish that golf had, mm -hmm. uh, tennis got a few points for us, uh, that we'll end up finishing at least in the top five. Fresno City College looks to be so far out in front of everybody that I don't think anyone can catch them. Mm -hmm. uh, Mount Sac and uh, American River are the other two teams that are ahead of us. Yeah. I'm hopeful that we can at least pass American River. Right. They're one of our big eight rivals, <laughs> yes. and yes. they've never finished ahead of us, so uh, we want to make sure we do that. Uh, but again, it's a pretty good gauge of the strength of our program, and every year, for eight years now that we've had that award, we've finished in the top 10, mm -hmm. and most of those years, we've been in the top five. And of course, our best finish was second last year, and we finished third. So we're, we've established ourselves as one of the best athletic programs in the nation, and you know, I don't, don't like to put too much pressure on our coaches that, you know, we have to finish first. I want to finish first. I'd like to. But, you know, we go out and we compete the best we can. And some years the breaks go your way and you do a little better. And other years, maybe you don't. Uh, again, I think this year if we can finish in, in the top five spots, third I think would be great. Maybe we push for second. I just don't think we can realistically finish first this year. Yeah. But uh, wherever we finish in there, uh, Sean, it's going to be a great year for us. Yeah, and uh, it, you know, anytime you can, you know, finish in the top five is that's such a remarkable seat, you know, a remarkable semester or year of, of athletics. Um, and, and with that, how 
going into next year, going into the fall, we got football and some other, you know, other big sports coming up. How how involved are you with recruiting into the college, or are you involved at in any level with the recruiting? No, I'm not. I'm not really. That's uh, up to each individual coach to recruit, you know, players mm-hmm. for their respective teams. What role I do play, which is minimal, is I like to meet the recruits when they come on campus. I like to have our coaches bring them by. I like to meet the parents. Mm-hmm and talk a little bit about what else SRJC has to offer besides great coaching and a good athletic department. I think parents certainly are as much interested in that as they are the athletic piece. Athletes usually are focused pretty much on one thing, which is (laughs) the the team. Uh, And then, of course, I speak on behalf of the program in the community, and, you know, I'm raising funds and trying to help support our coaches and student athletes that way. But in terms of actually making phone contacts and that kind of thing with prospective student athletes. I really don't have uh, much of a role in that at all. Um, And one thing that's been talked about, uh, I'm sure at every every junior college, budget cuts. And uh, going into going into fall, how has the but how has the budget cuts affected or not affected the athletic programs, uh, the uh, you know here at the JC, um, are we in danger of losing any sports? Or, are, are uh, is everything going to stand pat? But you know it's it's been a huge concern you know for for every college you know uh, in, in the in the Big A as well as in the state. So where does you know how how protected or unprotected is the athletic program from those budget cuts? Well, Sean, what I would say to answer that, and there's no one set easy answer, but uh, my best attempt would be to say that we're we're underfunded. Uh, we've been underfunded since I've been here, and probably going back all the way to the last real severe budget cuts in 2003. Uh, lots of our budget items were cut anywhere from 25 to 50 percent, and and those funds were never restored. So when we came into this current budget situation, we were already underfunded. And now with the cuts that we've had to endure in the last three years, it's really been a challenge. And and I've got to really credit our coaches and our student athletes for really stepping up and helping Mm -hmm. to uh, support their own programs. Our coaches, as good a coaches as they are, uh, they're every bit as good a fundraisers and and, uh, bringers in of money Mm -hmm than they are anything else. And our kids work really hard. Uh, And as you were talking about just a few minutes ago, they really are committed and they have to be both in the classroom with practice and games and all of that. But then we ask them to fundraise and to help the teams raise money as well. And they, they do just a wonderful, wonderful job. We would not have the kind of program we have right now if we didn't have that kind of commitment from our coaches and from our student athletes to help take part in the responsibility of funding the program. In terms of where we go from here this minute, we're not anticipating dropping any programs. I haven't been directed to drop any programs. Uh, However, I would temper that by saying uh, that everything's up for review, and especially with the May revise that we just got from Governor Brown yesterday, uh, we're, we're holding our breath in hopes that the tax increase will pass in November. If it does, then I think we have at least a chance to perhaps get through the next couple of years without having to drop any sports or really make any more severe budget cuts. If it doesn't pass, all bets are off the table and we probably would have to go back and really look at every sport that we offer. And I think it's, it's not certainly my wish, but it's conceivable that if that uh, tax increase doesn't pass in November, that we would have to take a look at every one of our 20 sports, and we could end up dropping a sport or so. Hope it doesn't come to that, but you know you have to be realistic at uh, you know at what the future holds. And, and you know one thing with the kit, you know that I wanted to touch base. You go to any of our any of our football games, basketball games, baseball games. There is a student athlete there selling snack bar t-shirts hats and every one of them you can go up talk to have a conversation about that sport and uh you know and hopefully with with what's going on in the budget you know that can you know we won't have to lose any sport and that kind of integrity 
that goes with our sports will stick around with these with these great student athletes who who really are doing a remarkable job for our for our school um, is, is there going to be any any surprises coming up in fall that either the 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 people who follow the bear cub athletics uh, are either going to be really surprised with or really disappointed with well certainly i hope there's uh, nothing that's going to come up that they're going to be disappointed about. Uh, certainly, I can't predict our success level for next year. Uh, I'd like to think that we're on the verge every year of, of finishing first in that Natica Cup competition. Mm -hmm. Maybe next year will be the year. I do think our football program is going to bounce back. We've had a couple of subpar years. Yeah. The last few years, I know Coach Simons and the uh, uh, football coaches have been working very hard. Our recruiting has gone well. Mm -hmm. Now last year, part of that problem was injuries. We suffered oh, three or four yeah. crucial injuries, crucial. season ending injuries yeah. in the first game. Yeah. In fact, three in the first half. Yeah, I was there. It so was, if it was you can't brutal. always plan or predict that, but assuming that that doesn't happen to us again, I think our football season is gonna be very exciting next year. Uh, all of our sports, I think, are in a position to have good years again. We have a lot of athletes coming back. We didn't lose a whole lot of uh, sophomores. So we think that we can be at least as good and hopefully maybe even a little bit better next year. I don't have any you know, surprise as such. Okay. I'm just frankly right now focused on maintaining what we have, making sure we don't lose anything, and making sure that we can fund our existing programs at the highest level that we possibly can. Um, you ready for it? Kind of a tough question. Sure. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah, I guess in a hypothetical, because we have been blessed with such a good athletic program. At what point, when one of our teams is not having the success that they're used to, or that we expect here at the junior college, do you start looking at replacing a coach? Well, you do a review routinely at the end of every season with every program. And my uh, expectations for our coaches are that they provide a positive and enjoyable experience for our student athletes. And that uh, I like to have our student athletes say at the end of the season, win or lose, that they enjoyed it, that they got better, that hopefully they reached their potential, and that it was fun. Uh, let's face it, sports are meant to be fun. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a life or death situation. Yeah. You're not going to win every game. Uh, we want our coaches to work hard, get the most out of the talent that they have. We want them to be diligent in preparing and, and offering the best possible training that they can. The wins and losses generally take care of themselves. Uh, specifically, to answer your question, if we have a program where those expectations are not being met in terms of students enjoying the, the being on the team, yeah and uh, feeling like they had a good time, it was fun, and they got better. And then uh, we make whatever changes are necessary. We've made some changes in the past, and I would guess that we'll make some changes in the future. Again, the key is not based on one loss record. Uh, it, it's conceivable that we could replace a coach that won. It's conceivable that we could maintain a coach who perhaps doesn't win as many games, mm -hmm. but is offering those other things to their students. And, yeah. And that is that that is such a refreshing view in in the world of sports these days because every you know so many different sports are dictated by win and loss and here at the JC it's more about the student and that is you know in a number of big big college programs that's not the case and that that is that is really a refreshing way to to do business so to you know so to speak um, is is not to you know judge it by wins and losses but by the overall development of the student uh, what well, you know staying along the lines of coaching which of the coaches are, is your favorite to work with oh I can't answer that <laughs> uh, I'd, get, I'd get myself in trouble 20 times over <laughs> with 20 teams you know all of our coaches do a great job you know, I mean, some have had a little bit more success mm -hmm. than others. Some have been able to win state championships. Others have not. But I really can't find fault with 
uh, any of our coaches in terms of how hard they work, the number of hours that they put in, uh, the, uh, the passion and the intensity that they bring uh, to their programs. Uh, I think for the most part they're all reaching their potential and you know we some are just natural coaches and they're natural winners. Others have to work at it a little bit harder and and for some it's circumstances outside of their control. You know recruiting area. I mean you look at our great swim program. Yeah. But you have to keep in mind that we have the only swim program in this whole region. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. all the great swimmers in all of the high schools in the region come here. Yeah. Plus they know it's a great program. Right. Uh, some of our other sports, every single community college in the area has a team, and so recruiting those athletes becomes a little bit tougher. So it's, it's not an even playing field mm -hmm. in every sport. So you really, it's difficult to look at it and say one sport is, is doing better than another. Uh, you have to kind of compare them you know, side by side and, and with the other teams in the conference and so on. But no, I don't have a favorite. Mm -hmm. I like them all. I respect different things in all of them. Some, some of them bring different things to their teams than others. But by and large, we, you know, I mean, look at our success and what we've yeah. been able to accomplish. There's just not much there that I don't respect and have great admiration for. All right, final question coming up in the fall. What team do you predict will have the best success? For the fall, I, again, I'm hoping our football team bounces back and has a winning season and perhaps can get to a bowl game. I think that I think we need it. I know the coaches want it, the players want it. Uh, I'm hopeful that we're heading in that direction. I'd also like to see our men's and women's water polo teams have great years next year. Uh, men's and women's cross country, I'd like to see us be a little bit more competitive at the NorCal and the state level. Uh, our, uh, our, our wrestling, I think, is on the verge of breaking out and having a great year. They finished seventh in the state this year. Of course, you know we hosted the state yeah. championships yeah. here, and that was a great event. Uh, Coach uh, Fitzpatrick does a great job, and, and I'd really like to see them have a, a great year. Volleyball, I mean, how close can they get? Right. Right. They were just a point or two away yeah. from winning Second the state championship. Uh, as hard as Kelly Wood has worked, I would love to see her be rewarded mm -hmm. with a state championship. Yeah. I think would be fantastic. Uh, in looking at our spring sports, softball, I think we're heading in the right direction with our softball program now, and I think we've got the right coach in Phil Wright that's uh, taking them to hopefully uh, new steps. Track and field, I'd like to see us be a little bit more competitive mm -hmm. in the Big 8 and, and at NorCal. But, you know, I have uh, high expectations for all of our programs going into every season. You know, it's like baseball in the spring when you start off, everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero, right. Everybody has expectations of going to the World Series, and right. for some it doesn't happen, for a few it does. So again, I'm hopeful for another great year of Bear Cub Athletics next year. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Forkham, for joining us today, and I really enjoy spending some time with you and, and kind of, you know, seeing how how you look at sports here at the JC, and, and congratulations to you and the entire athletic program on a remarkable, remarkable 2011-2012 season. So well, thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your passion about Bear Cub sports love, and for love every, my Bear Cub everything sports. that you bring to it too is just as important. Thank you. We thank you for that. Thank you. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Oakley Sports Report. Thank you for joining me, Sean Doherty, your host. As always, it's my pleasure to spend a little time with the Bear Cub faithful every week talking Bear Cub sports. I also want to thank Dr. Jim Forkin for coming on the show today and spending some time talking Bear Cub athletics with us. And don't forget to join us next week as we'll have on your new school president, Dr. Frank Chong, to discuss his future plans for Bear Cub athletics. As always, go Bear Cubs!